Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. The Blue Lagoon is a 1980 coming-of-age romantic survival film that was directed by Randall Kleischer. The screenplay was written by Douglas Stewart, and it was based on a 1908 novel of the same name. The movie stars Brooke Shields and Christopher Atkins. The storyline goes that on a journey to San Francisco, Richard, his father, and cousin Emmeline find themselves on a ship that's about to explode. They rush to the lifeboats with a gentleman named Patty Button, and the two children end up escaping while their father and uncle are on another lifeboat. In the chaos that followed, the lifeboats become separated. Patty, Richard, and Emmeline find themselves with no food and no water, stuck in the middle of nowhere. After some time, the three come across an uncharted paradise, where Patty quickly teaches the children to fish, hunt, and build things. After a period of time, Patty gets drunk off a barrel of rum that's found on the island when they first arrive, and he drowns in the middle of the night. Emmeline and Richard are now alone and very scared, and they move their location and rebuild their island home. Many years later, the two young teenagers have developed a very real home, but hormones and feelings between the two strain their friendship until Richard, who is still very determined to reach San Francisco, is let down by Emmeline when a ship passes by the island and she doesn't light the signal fire that they had made. He ends up throwing her out of the home that they had built together, and she attempts to survive on her own, but she gets hurt. After Richard finds her dying, he realizes how he really feels for her, and he manages to save her. Nature ends up running its course, and their friendship turns into love. As the couple continues to learn about the facts of life, when Emmeline has a baby and doesn't understand quite why. The movie was shot in Fiji on a privately owned island. The flora and fauna featured in the film includes an array of animals from multiple continents. Brooke Shields was cast in the role of Emmeline based on her performance in Pretty Baby. Jodie Foster auditioned for the role, but she later turned it down as did Kelly Preston and Diane Lane. Willie Ames was considered for the role of Richard before Christopher Atkins was given it. It was the director's original concept to have two grown characters play the entire film in the nude, which scared off many actors. With shooting set to begin in a matter of days, the desperate director agreed to let Shields make the film predominantly clothed with a body double employed for the more explicit scenes. With that settled, the casting director turned their attention to the thousands of audition tapes that had been made over the course of a year and decided that Christopher Atkins would be the right choice for the role as long as they permed his hair to give him a more savage look. He basically did all of his no-clothes scenes without using body doubles, and it was reported that he would have to stand nude every morning before shooting these scenes while a female makeup artist got his body ready for the camera. After he made this movie, it seemed like every role he was offered contained a no-clothes scene in it because they wanted to show off his backside. And filming this movie was pretty much culture shock for both lead actors, especially with Atkins, because he had never professionally acted before, before being cast in this film. The accommodations that they had to deal with while making this film were completely rustic. There was no water on the island, and there was no place to live. The cast and crew had to live in tents for nearly five months but I think the stars were kept on boats that were docked just offshore. 
Brooke Shields was 14 when she played this role, and Christopher Atkins was 18. So the scenes that he did was no problem. But the scenes that Brooke Shields appears in, or at least it looks like she appears in, were problematic for the production. Even though the young actress and the film's crew maintained that they used body doubles for those explicit scenes in the film, and that her hair had been glued down to her chest to avoid exposing it, the allegations still arose. The film is one of the most controversial releases that 20th Century Fox has ever done. It led to a government inquiry, and Brooke Shields was called to testify before the United States Congress. The young actress confirmed that body doubles had been used for any of the explicit scenes, and that her chest was constantly covered by her hair or clothing the entire time that she was making the film. When she was asked about making the no-clothes scenes, she always responded, they weren't hard at all because I didn't do them. The body double that they originally were planning on using broke her back, and the producers ended up asking a woman that they had hired to catch and train dolphins if she would be willing to do it because she basically had the same type of body as Shields. She agreed to it and said she had no issues at all doing the controversial swimming scenes. That dolphin trainer was actually a lady named Kathy Trout. She's an English-born model, actress, and deep-sea diver. And then she got into training dolphins for the movies. It's also said that at 16, she made the Guinness Book of World Records as being the deepest female deep sea scuba dive, breathing ordinary air, which was to a depth of 320 feet. She was a sports clothes and glamour model through the 1960s and went on to work as a crew member on the return to Blue Lagoon and several other feature films that were produced in Australia and Asia. This wasn't Brooke Shields' first controversial movie. Just two years earlier, she had starred in Pretty Baby, in which she played a 12-year-old prostitute. The critics absolutely loathed this production, and it really is not a very good film, except for the cinematography. That makes it worth watching. But the production had the last laugh, as it raked in more than $58 million at the box office making it the ninth highest grossing film of 1980. Take a look back at this film from 1980. It's definitely not one of the best that you'll see, but there are some redeeming aspects to it. It's beautifully filmed. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.